Cat Kid Comic Club Collaborations Written and illustrated by Dave Pilkey Chapters and Comics Chapter 1 Off to a Bad Start Chapter 2 The Best Day of All Time Comic The Continuing Saga of Baby Flippy Comic In the Autumn Pond Haiku, Shoto and Photos Chapter 3 A Walk in the Woods Chapter 4 Gilbert and Curly Heed the Call Chapter 5 The Parody that relied heavily on the fair use defence to forestall any liability for copyright infringement Comic Frogzilla Chapter 6 Business Partners Chapter 7 Melvin and Naomi get their chance. Comic Chubbs McSpiderbutt Easy Spider Chapter 8 The Smallest Act of Kindness Comic Run, Little Baby, Run! Chapter 9 Regrets Comic Malocop Chapter 10 Naomi and Melvin learn their lesson, sort of. Notes and Fun Facts Chapter 1 Off to a Bad Start Hello and welcome back to another dramatic day of the Cat Kid Comic Club. I'm your host, Sarah Hatoff, and today, 21 baby frogs will dive into creativity. This is Little Petey and Molly. They're the president and vice president of this thrilling club. Tell me, are you excited about yesterday's enchanting, explosive, electrifying news? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cut. Remember how we talked about those one word answers? Yeah, yeah. Well, this is supposed to be a conversation. I'm trying to make this interesting. So please stop answering every question with yeah or nope. Talk to me, elaborate, express yourselves. So let's start again and let's all try to be super enthusiastic. Okay, okay. Friday interview, take 12. We're back with little Petey and Molly. So, yesterday's news was very exciting, wasn't it? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Well, why don't you tell us about it? Um, okay. These four kids in our club are going to get their comic published. It's gonna be a real book and stuff. And we're all gonna work on it together and stuff. Molly, you don't need to put your mouth on the microphone. Just talk normally, okay? Okay, and stuff! Not so fast! Oh, look, it's Flippy! Flippy is the father of all 21 students. And me! Oh, yes, he's Molly's dad too. What's up, Flippy? Unfortunately, there will be no comic club today. Why not? Because your bedroom is a mess. Can I clean it up later? No. Now get going. Oh, man. I never get to do anything. What did you say? I said, okay, Daddy. I'll go clean up my room. No fair. How come we 
all got punished just because Molly didn't clean her room. Are your rooms clean? Um, no, no. Get in there and get to work. Oh, gee whiz. I'm going to do an inspection and I'd better not find out that you've all just shoved everything in your closets again or under your beds. But Daddy, it's not fair. We cleaned our rooms. Me too. And we finished our comics. But now we don't get to share them. It's the worst day of all time. Well, if you want, you can share your comics with our TV audience. We can read our comics on TV? Yes, for the whole world. Chapter 2 The Best Day of All Time Today's first comic is by Wendy and Rain, who are working together on a serialized biography about their dad when he was a kid. I adapted the story and I drew the pictures on my computer. The Continuing Saga of Baby Flippy Based on a True Story by Wendy and Rain when we last saw a hero, he was in big trouble. He had been captured by kidnappers, bullied by a blockhead, slammed by shipwreck, lit up by lightning, zap, and swallowed by a shark. Baby Flippy was not having a good day. We're trapped inside the belly of a shark, and it's all your fault, Baby Flippy. You'll pay for this, Fish Face. Fish Face. Fish Face. Fish Face. Suddenly, Baby Flippy flipped out. He started to grow and grow. And grow, and grow, roar! Oh no! The gamma rays in that lightning bolt must have supercharged his DNA, causing him to transform into a terrifying baby and to grow a pair of purple pants for some reason. Baby angry! Uh-oh! Baby smash! Clunk! Baby punch! Pow! Baby fist food combo! Booyah! Whoosh! Splash! Oh boy! We're saved! Cling! Clang! Then, come on kid! Let's get out of here! Swoosh! Baby Flippy and the octopus swam to a cave at the bottom of the ocean. Chomp! That shark can't fit inside this cave, so let's wait here until it leaves. Try to relax. Be more chill. Be more chill. Be more chill. Soon, Baby Flippy was back to normal. What happened? You flipped out. I did? Yep. Where are we? I don't know, but at least we're safe. But then... Whoosh! What's happening? Oh no! This isn't a cave! Splash! It's a spaceship! Don't miss our next thrilling adventure, Baby Flippy in Space. Wow, you sure lived an exciting life, Flippy. No, I didn't. None of that story was true. Yeah, we know. We spiced things up a little. 
a little, that story was all spice. We know, but your true story was kind of boring. Yeah. Girls, just because you think something doesn't mean you need to say it out loud. Your words can be hurtful. You're sorry, Daddy. Okay. Hey, Daddy, when you went to space, how did... I never went to space! Now get back in there and clean up those bedrooms. Hurry before he grows into Baby Hulk again. I never did that either. Okay, moving along. What can you tell us about your creation? It's a poetry comic about autumn and we made it together. In the Autumn Pond, Haiku Shadow and Photos by Summer and Starla In the Autumn Pond, every leaf casts a shadow, each sound an echo. The sun shows the way, but the sun is not the way. There's a difference. Autumn days grow cold, yet in that winding downward, promises appear. Each star shines brightly, sparkling crisp on frigid twigs, dancing in breezes. Tiny scarlet leaf clinging fiercely to the branch. It's time to let go. Little fallen leaves, your journey is not over, now you are a part. That was lovely, girls. I agree. It was beautiful. It's, it's just... It's just so sad that the rest of your siblings weren't able to see it. We saw it, Daddy. Yeah, it was awesome. Hey, you kids get off of there and clean up those bedrooms. Chapter 3 A Walk in the Woods while the kids clean their rooms, Summer and Starla have allowed us to tag along as we dig deeper into their creative process. How do you get inspired to make your haiku photo comics? Well, we like to walk around in nature. It helps us get ideas and stuff. Click! Oh, man, what's wrong? My finger got in the way. Click. Oh, man, what happened? It's out of focus. Click. Oh, man, what now? The bugger is trying to shoot jumped away. Why are you so bummed out, Summer? Well, everybody thinks I'm a good photographer. But really, most of the pictures I take aren't very good. Almost all of them are bad. I never show anyone my bad pictures. I only show the good ones. Oh, um... I think all photographers do that. They do? Yeah, that's what I do, and I'm a pro. Really? Wow, I'm just like a pro. Starla, can you teach us how to write a haiku? Sure, they're just short descriptions of nature. 
Each poem has three lines, and each line has beats, just like music. Line one has five beats, the second line has seven, the third line has five. Do you write haiku poems about nature? Um, no. You can write a haiku about anything. If you really look, everything is beautiful. Just open your heart. That's a lovely thought. You should make a haiku about that. I just did. Chapter 4 Gilbert and Curly Heed the Call 45 minutes later Alright kids, I've checked everybody's rooms and most of you have done a pretty good job. You're all excused until supper time. All except for Curly and Gilbert. Hooray! Let's go, boys. I thought you said your rooms are clean. We said mostly clean. How are these rooms mostly clean? Well, the ceilings are clean. And all the walls are clean, only the floors are messy. So in terms of surface area, the floors are just a small percent of the... I want those rooms cleaned up now! But Daddy, we get distracted. Yeah, we try to clean our rooms. But we always end up drawing or making comics. Alas, our hearts long to clean, but our souls must heed the call of creativity. Oh, really? Well, that's too bad. I'm tired of your excuses, so I'll give you two choices. You can either clean your rooms with a good attitude or with a bad attitude. It's up to you. Really? Okay, I choose bad attitude. Rawr! Stomp, stomp, stomp. I am Frogzilla. Come here, you puny crayon. Ha <laughs> ha! How dare you defy me? Help me, please! Somebody help me! Into the box you go! Not the box! No! Where's my next victim? No! Wait! Please! Aha! Uh -huh. You thought you could hide? No! Please! I beg you, you can't hide from Frogzilla. No. Hey, Gilbert, what? Frogzilla is a really good idea for a comic. Write it down, write it down. Sweet. Let's get started. Okay. One time, a frog swam in some nuclear waste. Suddenly, he began to grow. And grow, and grow. Hey, Daddy, are those guys done yet? The comic club is having a big meeting. We're making a new comic, Molly. It's called Frogzilla. I bet you'll never guess what it's about. Um, is it about a giant radioactive frog who destroys a city? Hey, how did he guess? It sounds just like Godzilla. You can't just steal someone else's idea. We didn't. You did too. Stealing is against the law, you guys. Molly's right. You can't take somebody else's idea. Oh, man, but 
You can make a parody. What's a parody? A parody is a humorous version of someone else's idea. Oh, are you saying we can't copy Godzilla, but we can make fun of Godzilla? Yep, that's totally legal. Let's make a parody. Chapter five: The parody that relied heavily on the fair use defense to forestall any liability for copyright infringement. Well, folks, the sun has set, and today's drama has slipped peacefully away. You kids, get back in those beds right now! And now it's Saturday, a day of hope and graceful new beginnings. You kids, get out of those beds right now! The comic club doesn't meet on the weekends, yet all of these kids continue to be creative after a hearty breakfast. Chores. An independent reading. Curly and Gilbert are busy putting the finishing touches on their latest collaboration. We're almost done. Gilbert's just coloring the last two pages. While we wait, I need to ask, what's that sign all about? Oh, that's to remind us. To remind you to fail. No, to remind us not to be scared of failing. You see, we make tons of mistakes, and this reminds us that mistakes are just part of the game. Yeah, mistakes can be fixed. Oh, you misspelled miserably. Yeah, we know. Okay, the color is all finished. Now we put the pages in order, staple them, ka-chunk, 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 and it's ready to devour. Frogzilla, featuring the Time Wasters, a parody by Gilbert and Curly. One time at school, Felix and Jax, pew pew pew. Stop wasting time. We're not wasting time. Pew pew pew. This video game teaches valuable life skills. Pew pew. Kaboom. Quick, smash the evil bunny. Pow. Give me that phone. Oh man, what a rip! You boys need to do your science project. Here. Dissect this frog. No fair. Weak. Why do we always have to do stuff? Yeah, but then, hey, what? We're frogs. So why are we dissecting a frog? Hey, I object on moral grounds. I object on weirdness grounds. Okay, if you refuse to do your work, then you can stay after school and clean up the science lab. Bogus! I'm calling the cops. And so, man, I hate cleaning up the science lab. Me too. What should we do with this dead frog? Just throw it away. I have no problem with that. Hey, what should we do with this growth formula? Toss it, glug glug glug. And what about this dangerous atomic waste? But bye, swash. Two points. Now let's get back to our game. Pew 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 pew. 
my turn. Pew, 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 pew. Rumble, rumble, rumble. Pew, pew, pew. Glob, glob, glob. Suddenly, from the depths of the trash can, the DNA of a forgotten frog morphed with toxic radioactive goo to create life. Pew, 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 pew. Grrr. My turn again. Pew, 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 pew. Grrr. Get those evil baby ducks over there. I'm trying. Grrr. Hurry, your health meter is running low. I know. Pew, pew, pew. Roar. Hey, do you mind? We're trying to play a game. Crash! Hey, Frogzilla just destroyed the school. Oh, and he made me lose all of my lives. Pow! How rude! That was an important game. I know, we almost reached level 9. How can anybody be so selfish? Frogzilla must be stopped before he ruins someone else's video game. Beep, beep, boop, beep. What are you doing? I'm calling the cops for real this time. Beep, boop, soon. Ring, ring, sup. What? He did? We're on our way. Come on, dog man. Frogzilla messed up some kid's video game. We need those jets. No way! But he was almost on level 9. And so, zoom, zoom. Okay, dogman, are you ready? Everyone is counting on us, so let's try our best. To not make any mistakes. Chomp, gulp. Oh no! Frogzilla just swallowed Chief and Dogman. Weak! Bummer! It looks like it's up to you, Felix and Jax. You must save the world from Frogzilla. Oh man! What a rip! Will Felix and Jax save the world? Can they rescue Dogman and Chief? And when will they ever reach level 9? Pew, pew, pew. Find out in a next thrilling parody. Frogzilla vs. Mecha Frogzilla. Wow, that was awesome. Thanks. I can't believe you made this in one day. Well, it was a lot of work. Yeah, when we started writing... Our story wasn't very good, so we rewrote it two times, and each time it got better and better. So you failed miserably at first. Yep, yep, but we never gave up. If you want to be a good writer, you got to have the courage to be a bad writer. Chapter 6 Business partners. Meanwhile, yes, I understand. Hey, Daddy. Daddy? But what about Section 3, Article 5? Hey, Daddy. Daddy? 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 Hey, Daddy, can I talk to her? Please, Daddy, it's really, really important. I need to talk to her too. Seriously. Just put her on speaker, Daddy. Yeah, Daddy. Daddy, Daddy. Hey, Daddy. Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. I just need... To... Can I call you right back? Click. Get out of my office now. You heard the man, Melvin. Off you go. You too, Naomi. But, Daddy, I'm the director, and I'm the agent. 
We have duties and responsibilities. Get out now. But daddy, five, four, three, two, one. Well, what did the publisher lady say? We don't know. Daddy won't even let us talk to her. It doesn't make any sense. Daddy wants us to be responsible, but when we try to be, he won't let us. How am I supposed to figure out my purpose if I never get any responsibilities? I know. All we wanted to do was be responsible. Chapter 5 Melvin and Naomi get their chance. Meanwhile, we're back with the Hacker Brothers. So tell me, how did he make all of these cool toys? Um, well, they all started off as broken toys. And we hacked them. Yeah, like we took this baby doll head and stuck it on this wrestler guy's body and made an old new guy. How did he get his new head to stay on? We used wire and hot glue. We use lots of duct tape too. I think it's called duct tape. Yeah, we know. But it's fun not to say duct tape. While we hack our toys, we talk about story ideas. Then we write down our ideas and make a sketch comic. Some people call these rough drafts, but we call them storyboards. Then we set up our toys and take pictures. Click. We try to make the photos look like the storyboards. Then we put it all together on the computer. Let's take a look. Chubbs McSpider Bot. Easy Spider, written and directed by the Hacker Bros. In our last adventure, the Not Very Nice Club was not feeling very nice. It's all your fault, Scott. First, you knocked Big Baba's head off, then you flattened it. Then you went to the store and bought him a baby head. As a replacement. Now we have to call him Big Baba Babyhead. Hey, don't call me that. Why? It's not very nice. But we're the not very nice club. Now quit your belly aching. Let's go to Head or Us and buy a new head for Big Baba Babyhead. Hey, and no mistakes this time. Okay, Scott? Okay. Well, what are you waiting for? Let's go. Um, okay. Don't rush me. Stop the engine. Hurry, Scott. They're about to close. I sure wish I'd learned how to read. You know, I'm glad we live so close to Heads R Us. It's the only store of its kind on Earth. If anything bad ever happened to that store, I'll be stuck looking like this forever. Thank goodness that will never happen. Click, ver, ka chunk, whoosh. Shh. Meanwhile, I think I'll close early. Shh, slam, la 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 la. Shh, shh, crash, kaboom. Meanwhile, here's your tutti frutti vanilla kiwi froyo soda, Jake. Do you want sprinkles? No. What's wrong, little buddy? I think we're too soft, chubs. Really? Yeah, I mean, do you think Batman drinks stuff like this? No, 
Do you think Superman lives in a customized van with a built-in disco? I don't think so. Do you think Spider-Man has heated toilet seats and flashy neon signs? Probably not. If we want to be famous like those guys and have our pictures on kids' pajamas, then we need to be hard. All we've done lately is eat sushi and play video games. Beep, 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 beep. Oh no! It's the spider computer. Come on, chubs. Now's our chance. Star got blown up. To the spider spring. Boing! Vroom! Remember, chaps, we've got to be hard. Okay, but Jake? Yes, chaps? Weren't Batman's mom and dad killed brutally when he was just a little kid? Yep, right in front of him. And didn't Spider-Man's uncle get stabbed to death? Shot to death, but yeah. And didn't Superman's parents explode? They sure did, along with 1.4 billion other innocent folks. Well, I don't know if I have what it takes to be that hard. Gee, Chubbs, maybe you're right. Maybe we're not ready for all of that graphic violence. Hey, Jake, do you want to go back home for some sushi and video games? Okay, Chubbs, let's go home. Meanwhile, you bought the whole store. Nice going, Scott. Sorry. All of my hopes and dreams have been reduced to ashes. Yet from these forsaken ashes, a mighty phoenix has risen. From now on, ye shall call me the mighty phoenix. Nah. We like Big Baba Baby Head better. I told you not to call me that. It's not very nice. Come on, Scott. Let's go do some crimes. Hey, wait up. I'm serious. Come on, guys. Come back. Will the not very nice club ever win? Will our heroes ever be violent enough to appear on kids' pajamas? And will Scott ever learn to read? Find out in the next epic adventure of Chubbs McSpiderbot, coming soon. That was wonderful! Thanks! Ding, 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 ding. What's that noise? Ding, ding, ding. Daddy's ringing the bell. Ding, 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 ding. Let's go. Ding, ding. Please take your seats. I've got some exciting news. The contract for your book has just been signed. What? How come we didn't get to sign it? Because you're children. Rats! No fear! I was practicing my autograph all week. And the best news of all is that he just got paid. Wait, they paid us before we finished the book? Yes, it's called an advance. Now most of the money is going into the college fund. Oh man! But if you kids are serious about working together on this book, then I think it's only fair that you all get to enjoy some of the profits. Little Petey, Molly, here we are, Daddy. Please pass one envelope to each kid and you may both keep one for yourselves. Okay. 
Hey, I got 50 bucks. Me too. So did I. We all did. We're rich. Hooray! Candy store, here I come. This is the best day ever. What? Only 50 bucks? We got ripped off. Me too. No fear. This is the worst day ever. Melvin and Naomi, come with me. What is the problem? Well, we think we should get more money because we've got more responsibility. Or at least we try, but he never let us. Oh, I see. You two would like more responsibilities. Yeah. Great, I'll be right back. Okay, here you go. What's this? My phone. The phone that you both broke. Are you sure that was us? Yeah, in the last book, remember? We are both responsible for breaking it. So you can both be responsible and get it fixed. Now you have the cash to pay for it. But Daddy, we weren't talking about the boring kind of responsibility or the expensive kind. We're talking about the fun kind of responsibility. There's no such thing. Now take that phone to the repair shop and show me some responsibility. Chapter 8. The smallest act of kindness. Okay, kids, while Naomi and Melvin run an errand, I wanted to talk with you all about giving some of your new fortune to help others in need. Like who? Well, there's a shelter over in Bedford Falls and they help lots of people and animals in our community. They give food, warm beds and toys and books to anyone who needs them. What if you gave them some of the money you just made? Okay, yeah. Would you all be willing to give five dollars each? Yep, sounds good. Works for me. Nice. I'm so proud of you kids. I'm proud of us too. We're awesome. Daddy? Yes, Poppy, here. But that's all of your money. I know, but I already have food and a warm bed. And toys and books. Poppy, I think you should keep this. Fifty dollars is not going to make that much of a difference. Here, Daddy, now it's a hundred. Here's another one. Don't forget ours. Yeah, take ours too. Here, Daddy, here you go, Daddy. Bye-bye, candy store. I, I, I don't know what to, to, uh-oh. Daddy is getting the feels again. I think he's gonna cry. Quick, we gotta lighten the mood. What do we do? What do we do? Hey, I know. I can read a new comic book to Daddy. Hurry! Run, little baby, run! Story by Billy, art by Corky, color by Pink. One time. Hey, Mama, I'm hungry, man. Okay, I'll call food restaurant. Beep, beep, boop. Ring, ring. Sup. Give me some food. What kind? Give me two large french fries and a super-sized shake. I can't hear you good. We got a bad connection. Two large french fries and a super-sized shake. What? I said two large french fries and a super-sized shake. And make it snap your no-tip for you. Click. What's wrong? 
I think Mama just ordered two large French flies and a super-sized snake. Welp, the customer is always right. And so, boop, beep, boop, beep, beep, boop. Hello, France. Oui, oui. P.S. Oui, oui means yes, yes in French. Do you guys got any large fries? Oui, oui. Can I have two? Oui, oui. And so, French Airlines. Do you enjoy your trip? Oui, oui. Oui, oui. Great. Now go to little baby's house and hurry. Oui, oui. Oui, oui. Meanwhile, at the zoo. Hey, where are you taking that super-sized snake? To little baby's house. His mama ordered it. Welp, the customer is always right. I know. Soon. Is this the right place? Wee oui, wee, oui, wee oui, wee. Oui. Ding dong. That must be our food. It's about time. Little baby, it's for you. Run, little baby, run. Crash, get him. Wee oui, wee, oui, wee oui, wee. Oui. Little baby, run and run. I'm a hide here. That was a close one. I heard that. I've got you now, little baby. Grrr. I'll use this helium. Clop, s clunk, twist, 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 twist. Ta da! Hey, large flies! Wee wee, wee wee, check this out. It's a big dog. And guess what big dogs make? A uh, grande caca. And what do flies la best of all? Grande caca! Grande caca, grande caca. Well, I'm glad that's over. I'm home, mama. Sweet. This calls for a celebration. Beep, boop, beep, boop, boop. Sup? Give me an ice cream cone. What? Give me an ice cream cone, I said. Could you repeat that, please? Give me an ice cream cone. Click. What now? What's an ice cream cone? Beats me. But the customer is always right. And so, ding dong, um, little baby, it's for you. Scream! Run, little baby, run! Are you still feeling emotional, Daddy? Well, I guess not. It worked! Hooray! Later. Phil's Electronics. Thanks, Mr. Falcon. Daddy's phone is almost like new. And we're almost out of money. But I'm not leaving empty-handed. Where are you going? Where does it look like? Daddy said we're not allowed to eat sweets unless we ask first. Hey, Daddy! Can I eat a bunch of candy? Okay, I asked. He can't hear you from here. That's not my problem. I asked and nobody said no. I'm telling. Hey, Daddy, can I eat a bunch of candy too? Chapter 9. Regrets and finally, folks, Elle and their brothers, Corky and Pink, have created a new comic by photographing cookies and candy. We used frosting and gum to stick it all together. Sweet! Mellow Cop, 
written and directed by L. Corky and Pink. One time, a marshmallow wanted to be a cop, so he paid a visit to Chief Candy Dispenser. What makes you think you can be a cop? I've got these sunglasses. Hey, that's offensive. There's more to being a cop than just owning a pair of sunglasses. I also own a moustache. Oh, well, why didn't you say so? You're hired. Soon, Malacop had a swell hat and a tiny pair of handcuffs. Sweet. Malacop, I'd like you to meet your new partner, Chuck Lidbar. Sup, Mallow Cop? Yo, now let's get you guys a cop car. Unfortunately, the only car we have now is this old clunker. We call her Grandma. Grandma Crackers. She's mostly Graham Crackers. Hmm, chocolate, marshmallow and Graham Crackers. Something tells me that we will go very nicely together. We won't let you down, Chief. And so. Hey, Mallow Cop, what's up, Chuck? I've got a funny feeling that this is all a big setup for a really dumb joke about s'mores. What makes you think that, Chuck? Find out in the next thrilling adventure of Mallow Cop. Story and art by L. Art and photographs by Corky. Art and digital wizardry by Pink. Did you like it, Daddy? Yes, that was very clever. But I don't want you kids wasting food. We didn't. We ate almost everything when we were done. You ate all of the sweets? Yeah, I ate Grandma Crackers all by myself. I ate the chief's desk. And I ate everybody else. Then we ate the fire and the floors and the cotton candy smoke. Is that why you three had tummy aches last night? Um... I believe that was unrelated. I do not want you kids eating too many sweets. Why not? Because you always get sick. Yeah, it's fun at first. But later... Oh, man. Later... Oh, man. I wish you hadn't eaten all of that candy. We had to. Otherwise, we would have had to share it with everybody. Those yahoos can buy their own candy. Yeah, they've got money and we're broke. Seriously, they would be sharing with us. Wait a minute. That's it. What's it? You're like everybody's agent, right? Yeah. That means everybody owes you 10% of their cash. Hey, yeah, those kids owe me money. Let's go. And so, hey, you freeloaders. Young Alvin, five bucks each. Why? Because he's your agent. And agents got to get paid. We don't have any money. What? Why not? We gave it all away. To who? To that shelter over by... Um, I forgot where it is. They give food and stuff to people and animals who need it. You gave all of your money to help others? Yeah, we all did. Are we bad people? Well, I... Poppy? Daddy said we're not allowed to spit water on each other anymore. He said, 
in the house, and he almost got his phone all wet. So he... It was just a joke. Were you guys crying? No, it sure looks like you were. But we weren't. What's wrong? Plop, you won't understand, Poppy. You're so sweet and innocent and stuff. But we've done bad things. Oh. I'm never gonna figure out my purpose. Your purpose? I've been trying to figure it out for the last two books. It's just too hard. Really? Mine was easy. My purpose is to make the world a better place every day. How do you do that? Well, I just try every day to be nice to everybody, to help with stuff, to make comics and art, to protect animals and bugs, and, um, to be thankful. Those are just little things, Poppy. How do they make the whole world a better place? Well, Daddy says it's like a pebble. It seems small, right? Yeah, but watch this. Plip. See those circle waves? Look at how they get bigger and bigger. All of those circle waves bounce off of stuff and move things, sometimes in ways we can't even see. They touch so many other things, and in a teeny tiny way, because of the teensy weensy little pebble, the whole pond will never be quite the same again. Wow, that's a pretty good purpose, Poppy. Thanks. You can borrow it if you want to, at least until you figure out your own. Chapter 10 Naomi and Melvin learned their lesson, sort of, soon. So let me get this straight. After you fixed my phone, you spent the rest of your money on chocolate-covered gummy worms? Yeah, it was her idea. And now you both have tummy aches? Yeah, yeah. Would you like some peppermint tea? Okay, and so. We'll just take a few lumps of sugar. You'll take no sugar. Oh, man. Can we have some ice, though? Yeah, it's too hot. Okay, I'll be right back. Sugar! Sweet! Click, click, click. Plip. Hey, look. Circle waves. They're everywhere. Here's your eyes. Plip, plop. Daddy? Ah, oh, I'm sorry we were such a pain today. Will you try to do better tomorrow? Yes, yes. Okay then, as long as you both remember that I love you very much, even when you're a pain. I love you too, Daddy. I love you more. No, you don't, bug breath. I do too. I love him a thousand times more. Well, I love him fifty million times more. All right, you do not do too. I love him an infinity times infinity plus sixty seven thousand infinities. Enough. Well, I love him infinity cube times a queen quaginja quad ring gentiliard Google plexus times seventy one. If you two don't straighten up and fly right. You're both gonna spend Google Plex Infinity on the timeout rock. Well, folks, 
another day of ripping drama has ended. Will the creativity continue? Will the drama decrease? And will Naomi and Melvin ever straighten up and fly right? Find out in our next dramatic saga. Cat Kid Comic Club Book 5 is coming soon.